There's a town in the northeast of Portugal, in the Bragança district, in the land of Trazosmonch, that is slowly disappearing. But once a year, for about a week, it fires back to life with a festival that might just preserve the village's existence. This is Pudence. Better yet, this is Carnival de Pudence. Join us as we take the two-hour drive from Porto, Portugal, cutting west to east across the country, north of the Douro River. If you're into travel, culture, food, and a little bit of adventure, then this video was made for you. Before arriving at Pudence, our tour provider announced we would be stopping for lunch in Mirandela. Don't worry, you didn't click on this video to watch us eat food, but there is a very important dish known across Portugal that has its origins in Mirandela, so it was obligatory for us to eat it while there. That famous food is algueira, a traditional non-pork sausage that Jews in Portugal prepared to fool those that were trying to expel them from the country during the Portuguese Inquisition. The word algueira is derived from the Portuguese word for garlic, but these days, it doesn't have to have garlic in it. It's typically made from poultry or game and bread for texture. Its texture is much softer than sausage. However, this one in particular was different because its casing and preparation gave it a great snap when bitten into. All right, so they've just given us some algeta as appetizer. Always good. Okay. After fueling up on our only full meal between the hours of 11 a.m. and 9 p.m., we were mere moments away from feeling the energy and buzz of a town that just two weeks earlier, when the tour leader, Kauf, visited, was dead. As we arrived to the parking lot, it's clear we're not the only group here, and why would we be? Carnival de Pedens is thought to have Celtic roots from a pre-Roman period. It's a festival held between Domingo Gordo and Shrove Tuesday. The Grimms, or Caritos du Perens, is what makes this particular carnival festival so unique among all in the world, and what ultimately led it to its inclusion in UNESCO's list of intangible world heritage sites. I think this is unique in the country. This is a small village, so they have a big tradition here, and I think for ferns here, it's to be inside of the community, you know. So I want to share this kind of cultural uh, things with you guys to be more involved with our community. Our anticipation builds as we waited to see these Grimms in person. Entering the village, the buildings were painted with beautiful, colorful murals depicting the Keditosh. One thing that stood out hugely is the importance of the Kerektosh in the festival in the town. These aren't just here for a week. They're painted on works of art that remain year-round. As we were slowly drawn into the village from the high point on the sloped hill of the main street of town, the crowd, noise, music, and energy started to build. Then it happened, our first live Kerektosh appeared. The Grimm's costumes are handmade works of fabric magic. The earlier costumes were made of hand-dyed sheep wool made in the village. The tricolors correspond to the colors of the Portuguese national flag, but the bells tell a slightly different story. During the three days of Carnival, the Caritos take trips around the village looking for young women to assault, I mean rattle, with their heavy bells. The symbolic act of rattling ladies with bells has possible connections to the ancient agrarian practices of that time and also fertility rituals. Not sure if I like it. <laughs> I liked it a lot. Was it as good for you as it was oh. for me? <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't. Back in the day, stories were told from the older generations of how the younger men would look for young single women to rattle as maybe a rite of passage or possibly just to fulfill some erotic desire or behavior. So what about the sticks or canes that some keritosh have? Well, the canes are also a part of the act as it's used to lift the body when jumping, to access the smoke sticks to steal some high-hanging chorizo or simply to play and make noise. The devilish looking red masks have been made of tin or leather, 
and can either make a person laugh or scare them depending on the individual. But ultimately, they're great for anonymity, especially when acting wild. Nowadays, generally males of all ages enjoy donning the costumes and finding any female they can or want to share this cultural heritage with. Those getting rattled no longer need to be single, but can be married. They don't have to be from the village or Portuguese. They can be a tourist or foreigner. I kind of hurts. The bells, the bells, the bells. They, it kind of hurts. They kind of slam against you. <laughs> oh, I love the pain. <laughs> And it doesn't have to only be the boys dressing up and having all the fun. Certainly not all of the Kerektosh are from Pudens. In fact, it's common now to have relatives from out of town come in and wear the costumes to help preserve this fun, lighthearted, and wonderful cultural heritage. Without the Kerektosh, this festival would not be the same. However, for many of us, the Grimms were only part of the fun. The other part was sharing this experience with each other. The beer, the traditional music, and the fire. This kind of thing is a wonderful experience to share with friends, not only because we have extra sets of hands to help with our quick moving energetic daughter, but doing stuff like this creates stories. Just like the story of the Keritush have been passed down orally, our memories of Pedence will be passed down and on to others so they can create their own experiences in Portugal. This is a phenomenal experience so far. I mean, you can really see that this town like lives and breathes this time of year. I mean, these murals are up all year round and it's a reminder of the carnival time that they have here. It's absolutely phenomenal. The colors that you see, the smells that you smell because there's, there's this like smoky burning in the air. I'm hoping that's telling us that we're close to the firing of the wicker man. Let's see. As our initial stroll down the main street from top to bottom wrapped up, our group started to get thirsty, and so most of us opted for a superbach to wet the whistle. At events like this in the US, you would find a serious price hike because of the sheer amount of tourism. But here, these beers were reasonably priced for two euros for the big ones, and one euro for a chocolate ginger shot. <laughs> it's always good. Chocolate. What's a street party without a band? Well, it's not a party in Pudence. There were a couple of different bands that drifted around doing trips with the Keritush, and these provided the soundtrack to the afternoon's events. Many of these people are from the region and clearly have a great time sharing their musical skills with the community. As the sun began to set, you could feel a shift. Not only could you feel it, it became visible. It was time. It was time for all of us to make our way down to the field near the bottom of the main street. So we decided to follow this little parade and find a good spot to witness the culminating event of this year's carnival. The signal for the end of the festival here is the Queima do Entru, or burning of the wicker man. This is the wicker man in question, and he's about to get it. A lot of the Keritush have encircled the giant wood and straw figure, and one of the town's elders prepares the torch that will ignite this very temporary statue, sending its fire high into the air and signaling the end of Carnival de Pudence, which also means that this town will have to wait another 360 plus days before it becomes relevant again. Despite this sobering reality, our time spent here with our guide and friends has left its mark. It's truly a cultural event to witness for anyone living in Portugal or nearby Spain. And it will live long in our memories. This experience was awesome. We're actually a little further away and we can feel the heat coming off of the fire. So I don't know what it feels like being closer, but this was a lot of fun and a must-see kind of experience.
So I was shooting right up close to it and definitely once the thing got lit, you could definitely feel the heat from it. It was pretty awesome. It, it honestly hit like instantaneously. The fireworks were really cool with the, the sparkles that were coming, shooting right at me. It felt like a lot of people in the way. So there was a lot of cameras uh, that I had to kind of weave through, but amazing experience. We had to really stop filming so we could just take it all in because when you're behind the camera, sometimes you're not feeling the moment. So we just stopped to feel the moment and uh, it was pretty awesome. Would love to do this again. Recommend anyone to do this. You've got to come to Podence to experience Carnival. Thank you all for watching. We don't normally do content pieces like this, but if you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button as it's a visual metric for us to know if people would like us to do more like this. If you're interested in traveling and living abroad, don't forget to subscribe to Expats Everywhere, your guide to a new life abroad. Now, let's get moving. moving. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.